We're live. We're live. Yay. Let us know if you can see us and hear us and if everything is all good. Smash a thumbs up on the comment section there. Thumbs up on the thumbs up. Um, pretty excited to be doing a live stream. It's been a while. It has. It's been almost exactly a month, actually. I was noticing that. Yeah. Yep. Nobody has said anything. Yeah. Wait. Can you hear Hello. us? Oh, there we go. That's good. 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 I'm take that as a good sign. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Awesome. Sound is good. Cool. Hey, it's Rocket Girl. What's up? Thank you, Kevin. Lots of familiar names there. Sweet. Yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Wow, we just jumped to 75. Yeah, I think it's been That's a little creaky. It was like going up mm -hmm, and down. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was just catching up. Yeah. So here we Hello. are. Yeah. <laughs> um, first of all, we just want to start with some thanks to all of you. 40,000 subscribers and just it's all of deal. the messages and comments and everything that we got after the video about Mackie's crash. Like, that means a lot. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And seriously. It, seriously feel the love. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, it's cool to like know that you guys have our backs and you are supporting us and you're along for the ride and that like you won't only watch videos of ours where things we, are going right. Yeah, where everything's <laughs> going perfectly. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as someone just said, someone just said, don't say smash the thumbs up. I agree. Do not smash anything. We've Special done enough thumbs. of that. No <laughs> thumbs. But if you will hit the thumbs up, that would. If you would press <laughs> the thumbs up, that would be great because, uh, yeah, then we'll get some more people, people in here. Mm -hmm. And we don't do live streams very often, so no. I think sometimes people are like, oh, let's get everybody like, in here. Surprised now. that we're yeah. doing a live yeah. stream. Surprise. Um, but yeah, we wanted to give you guys a little update on Mackie's shoulder. We don't actually know that much. Uh, we will see the orthopedic surgeon for a follow-up tomorrow. And that will be when we find out if he needs surgery or not. And as you can tell, someone pointed out, you're moving your arms really well. He really not is. Wearing a sling. He's not wearing the sling. No sling. He has full no. range of motion. Yeah. Um, he does have what they call... I don't know if you guys are familiar with an AC separation, but it's basically, and help me if I'm getting this wrong, but your, the ligaments that attach your collarbone to your scapula and the other stuff. <laughs> okay, wait, I might be able to explain this. So collarbone, scapula's on the back, that's the shoulder blade, and then the acro something or other is basically the shoulder bone, and it attaches to the scapula and the shoulder bone. So there's two tendons there, both of those are torn. They're gone. That's bad. Bye -bye. Thumbs down. That is what makes it a grade three. A grade five is oh, if. On. That's what it is. Thanks. Thank you. That's the A part. Yeah, that's the A part. So the, <laughs> the acromion. The acromion tendon is torn. The tendon to the scapula is torn. Both gone. That makes it at least a grade three. A grade five is when the muscles that hold the collarbone they're also are also torn and it and also has to do like some doctors determine the grade five based on how much space there is yeah between the collarbone and where it like used to be and so based on that Mackie's is definitely a grade five um, yeah because it's over a like, hundred percent yeah. displaced however just the way that he like the movement that he's regained the lack of pain that he's had in the first three weeks like has us feeling a little optimistic that they might kind of like reclassify it as a grade three. And the, the reason we would want that is grade three, frequently they do not do surgery and that's good. Like you have a good outcome without surgery. Grade five, they almost always do surgery because if you don't do surgery, you have a bad outcome. And like, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, what I care about is my long-term outcome. Like what I care about is being able to ride my bike 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, like since parents, I want to be able to ride when I'm in my sixties. 
I obviously want to be able to ride soon, but what's more important to me is being able to ride for the rest of my life. So that's where like what I care about is fully healing, even if it means it takes me out for a little bit longer. So that's where we are right now is follow-up appointment tomorrow. Where Somewhere he, between a grade three and a five, but not a four because fours are different. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask us why. Don't ask. It's confusing. <laughs> but basically tomorrow the specialist says either you have to get surgery and then I get surgery Friday. So very shortly afterwards or no surgery at which point I more seriously start doing PT because I know that I'm not going to get cut open and everything squiggled around. So that's the situation. I also talked to the specialist on the phone. What was it a week ago? I think it was exactly a week ago. And he was like, yeah, you can try moving your arm above your head because I hadn't gone past here at any point. I was doing some exercises that like involved going to here, but I hadn't gone higher. And he was like, go ahead and try. And yeah. And so he just lifted his arm up and was like, it feels fine. And I'm like, seriously? Yeah. Um, But it's not, I guess, all about pain like I think the the orthopedic surgeon will be able to tell if there's stability in there Mm -hmm. which that's like more the defining point of like what's likely to cause you issues farther down the line like you could still be pain-free and need to get a surgery surgery. because um so it's not just surgery but that being said crossing my fingers I'm feeling fairly optimistic because I am so pain-free and I have decent range of motion (laughs) Um, I'm optimistic that I may not need surgery. That being said, I still might need surgery. And if so, it's going to be an expensive surgery. So cross your fingers for us that it will not (laughs) be surgery because we don't really have like eleven, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to pay for surgery right now. And we also don't want to talk about it. No, (laughs) no, we do not. Um, Um, yeah, All right, let's look through some comments here. Well, we got a comment earlier, and I, I really appreciate this because someone said, like, despite these injuries, you guys had a really good year. And that's true. That is and totally we true. We have gotten a lot of comments on Instagram and YouTube recently along the lines of, like, oh, you guys are, like, having a terrible year, and, like, this must be so rough. And it's, like, yeah, the last couple of months have been kind of rough. But to be honest, it's been, like, a really awesome year for us awesome in a year. lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's been a really, really good year. We've done some other kinds of races. Our YouTube has more than doubled. We went from like 17 at the beginning of the year and we have hit 40 and it's November. So huge shout out to you guys. And thank you to you guys for helping make that happen. Cause like it's because of you guys that we are here and that's, that's huge. So thanks. Um, and the other thing we wanted to tell you guys about, you may have seen this a little bit on Instagram, but when we did BC Bike Race, and that was like one of the coolest things we did this year. And I think oh, yeah. that's why a little bit when people are like, oh, you guys had a bad year. We're like, no, we didn't. We actually did a lot of amazing things, one of which was BC Bike Race. And while we were there, we shot a sort of like mini documentary with Carlos Zumi. Mm-hmm. That will be coming out tomorrow. So. While you guys are here, open up another tab, go to Pearl Zumi's YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Also, it's gonna be super cool. The more people who go and hit subscribe from this, the happier Pearl Zumi is. <laughs> and Pearl Zumi is a sponsor of ours and help make what we are doing possible. So by going over there and hitting subscribe, you are helping us keep one of our financial sponsors. So like, you know, I think that's worth saying that that's true. Like that's, is how that works. is how it works is they want to see that supporting us is getting people to, you know, to their YouTube. And this and video is going to be awesome. We've seen it. Oh, it's, it's really, really, good. really good. I think really good. it does a great job of showing, you know, because we did a lot of videos from BCBR, obviously, but this is like a really different, um, <laughs> sort of a different perspective. Like, I think it's like, like we're used to having the editorial control and like telling our story. And so it's really interesting to have someone else follow us and like, like see their interpretation of like our story. 
So it's like a little weird. We're like, wow, this is so different, but also like really interesting for us to see. Yeah. And I think you guys will enjoy it as well. Um, I think you'll really enjoy it. It's really good. Um, thanks, Tony. Thanks so much, Tony, for the super chat. Yeah. Tony is one of our patrons. Yeah. He and Wendy are amazing. <laughs> and we really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you. Yeah, the support on Patreon has been awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, the support from everyone has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really, like, it, yeah, it was a rough crash for him. It was a rough um, afternoon for me <laughs> in several <laughs> weeks, really. So yeah. to be able to have people that we don't even know, like, saying, you know, we, we see what you guys are going through and, you know, we support you. That's super mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Like whether that's Patreon or here or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, on that note, tomorrow after the surgery, we will be putting an update on Patreon about yeah. what the doctor not says. After, you're not getting surgery tomorrow. Oh, I keep saying well, that. He keeps saying that. I and keep it's like, saying, I'm like, this is not, like, yeah, you've no, got to channel your energy towards not no having surgery. surgery. <laughs> tomorrow after the appointment, we will be posting on Patreon whether or not I need surgery. Hopefully I do not. So if you want real-time update on that, that'll be over on Patreon. Um, we will not be posting about that otherwise until the video, which will be after that. So that's something that we try to do for our Patreon team is just keep them up to date on yeah. what is happening in real time because they Got so we do have a question like how your concussion is. Uh, yes. Um, I'm looking at a screen right now. He's fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I think uh, he didn't really, I mean, I'll, I'll let you say. Well, okay. So as you guys saw in the crash, for those of you who watched the crash, um, I caught myself with my arms mostly and like tagged my chin and got some stitches, which Sid has since removed. Um, <laughs> she just grabbed them pliers and pulled them right out. We no, carry a suture kit. So oh, Sid, took yeah. this, Sid took the stitch, stitches out for me. Um, but yeah, so I hit my chin, but I didn't hit it very hard. Um, that being said, you know, whiplash is a real thing and is part of what causes concussion. So I knocked myself out. I was out for about five seconds. And then, yeah, it might have been less. Okay. I, I don't remember. I was out. And then I had some weird vision stuff for a about 10 minutes where like the world looked overexposed everything was too bright and that was worrisome obviously but after 10 minutes it went away and then like I had a little bit of a headache on and off for a couple days and as we mentioned online we took a week off from editing videos so I wouldn't have to look at screens I pretty much ignored screens I mean I looked at my phone occasionally for about a week and then we came back in and started editing videos again and I have had no issues since. So thank you for asking. I'm yeah. doing surprisingly and well. Definitely like I think Mackie did the right thing with his concussion. I think a lot of people rush it. Like there he didn't have many symptoms, but we still just like were super, yeah. super concerned. Even without the symptoms. Um, yeah. Just because brain injuries are no joke. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. We've had friends who've had some some bad ones and yeah, and Part sometimes it things like, like they, it doesn't come up right away. Like, even mm -hmm. if you don't knock yourself out, you might still have issues in a couple of days. You need to be, like, really aware and, yeah. and paying attention to what's going on with your body if yeah. you hit your head at all or come to a sudden stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, thank you to Mike for the super chat as well as Sitka999. Really appreciate that, both you guys. Um, Mike says, hope for a speedy recovery. Love the videos. Thanks for the have a laser helmet. I believe he purchased one of our laser helmets, um, which saved my head recently, yeah. actually. Um, and then Sitka says, Not that one, don't worry. No, yeah, don't <laughs> worry. We, we sent you a new one. Uh, looking forward to BCR Perlazumi video. Sign up for, ooh, nice. Sign up for BCR 2020. That's, you're gonna Congratulations. Love it. You're gonna love That's it. really so, cool. Yeah, make sure you, you will love the Perl video as well. Um, because, like, well, we were doing BCVR, like we were racing the entire time. Mm -hmm. So Justin, who was um, the videographer from Pearl Zumi, like he he got to see a little bit more of the like behind the scenes stuff and how they run the event and like and he shows that really well. It's yeah, very cool. He did a really nice job. It's a really cool video. Thank you also to XC Ben and Jackie. Hi Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Um, <laughs> for the super chat. 
that's huge. Um, Trails to Ales pointed out that there are 193 people in here and only 97 likes. So that means about 96 people need to hit. I'd say that's actually button. like a pretty good yeah, it's ratio. Good. Yeah. But it could be even better. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I'm, this is like the third or fourth question we've gotten about my hand. Um, oh, yes. I'll let you show them. It's pretty good. I, hey, there we go. Still. Let me hold it still. Yeah. Um, I'm keeping doing some taping with it because basically I messed up these ligaments. So the finger is a little floppy. Um, but I've been riding and I don't have any pain while I'm riding. Um, pretty much fine. I, yeah, I've been doing cyclocross races, which... So you're on a rigid bike. Yeah. Um, actually, towards the end of the last one, like my other hand, like started <laughs> to hurt so bad that I was like, oh, I guess the PT on this hand isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> this hand is really strong now. This hand is uh, not. Yeah, and I think that in some ways, like uh, drop bars are a little more comfortable. So um, just because of the position that my knuckle is in, um, so it's not a hundred percent, but I would say it's probably. Um, 95 mm -hmm. percent like it hurts but i like was pulling towels out of the dryer that hurt dishes hurt <laughs> chores <Yeah. laughs> back to my hand <laughs> it hurts so bad i can't wash the dishes <laughs> except actually which is ridiculous yeah i have a pretty good i have a pretty good tight face how do i yeah there you go like that and, um that's pretty good yeah my knuckles in kind of a different position than it used to be so i don't have like great range of motion back this way yet mm -hmm. that's about as good as it goes but um it's progressing it's just slow i think any sort of joint like bone breaks in the joint are slow so yeah i think i'm 12 random, weeks 11 weeks random factoid of the day ligaments versus tendons because i just learned this oh. ligaments attach a muscle to a bone so sid stretched her ligaments in her thumb tendons connect a bone to a bone and so that's what i tore in my shoulder is the really? attachment I from those were ligaments yeah someone says you have that backwards oh. I you have that backwards i have that backwards yeah Mine <laughs> ligaments. Are ligaments too. oh yours are ligaments too mm -hmm. we both had ligament problems yeah, yeah sorry i lied backwards. that's backwards yeah, tendons, are, tendons like... are muscle to bone ligaments are bone to bone i tore bone to bone sit stretched bone to bone <laughs> And it turns out that those don't heal, little ever. known fact, ever. Like once you stretch it out, it never unstretches, but you can form scar tissue around it and the scar tissue will like hold it in place like a ligament. So that is what we are hoping for. That has been basically my goal. Like the first couple of weeks when I was in the sling, the idea was to keep the arm in a good spot so that those that scar tissue could form appropriately. Yeah. So, um, Trump MTV. Yes. Thank you for the super chat. Congrats. Uh, recovery time for either scenario. AC injuries are hard. Like people have very very different outcomes with like the same injury. It depends a lot on like your personal anatomy. Um, I think also the amount of work that you did beforehand, because obviously right. like. The more work the you put in, the stronger you are, the quicker you'll recover. And that's generally true of all injuries. Um, but like we've heard some people say that they couldn't ride for like more than three months. And then we know some people who were riding in like a month and a half. Yeah, like five or six weeks. Yeah. Like we talked to someone who, um, an outer bike who had a grade three and he was five weeks out and he was riding a mountain bike. Yeah. So you don't know. Um, I'm not going to rush it. Yeah. Like, it's... as I said earlier, what I care about is long-term outcome. And frankly, it just means I'm going to be spending more time in the gym, strengthening my shoulders and upper body. And honestly, I think like if you are injured, I really encourage you to not put too much stock into the recovery estimates. Cause yeah. I think like it drove me nuts with my hand. Like nobody gave me a very concrete timeline. And I think in some ways that was good because I just made my own and I just did like worked really hard with the PG and OT stuff and stuff came around quickly. And so I was confident when I felt better that I could start riding at that point. Um, going the other way around, if someone had said like, oh, it's going to be six weeks. Like I was not ready to ride in six weeks. And if I had thought that I should have been for whatever reason, 
I could have made it worse. So yeah. I think regardless of what your injury is, obviously, like if you do get a surgery, they usually have pretty strict like post-op protocol that you should follow. Um, yeah, if I get surgery, it'll be like in a brace, a not move or in a sling. Yeah, yeah, not moving for a long time. Yeah, which would suck because right now I can do this. Sorry, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy to be able to raise my hand again. Um, thank you to Barry for the super chat as well. Really appreciate that. Um, someone who was it? Jason asked, when will we see biking content? So we had, I guess the, the Tuesday before, and then there was my crash video. Well, it means because I crashed and I can't ride a bike. Um, live stream today, Friday will be more biking content. So don't worry. Don't go anywhere. Plenty of excitement. I can't ride, but Sid can now. Yeah. I've actually been riding for a couple weeks at this point. Um, uh, yeah, doing cyclocross stuff, um, riding on the road. I have been riding mountain bikes uh, somewhat. Um, the weather's been a little rough. Um, I also, like, I'm not fully up to speed on the mountain bike just because I know that I can't, like, I need to be careful with falling on this thing just because it's um, stiff. So I've been kind of riding like a weenie, but I have been getting out there and riding, which is awesome. And, yeah, we have we have an actually pretty good backlog of videos right now. Um, we got a little behind on the editing. I think we are going to get back in gear this week. So, yeah, there will be um, cyclocross. There will be cyclocross videos starting on Friday. <laughs> Not Pretty racing, exciting. racing, but um, some skills work stuff, and then and then, and then you'll get to see me do my first ever cyclocross race. Yeah, <laughs> it involved a costume. Yeah, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, we're catching up on comments. Yeah, catching up on comments here. Someone said that depending on the recovery, it is six to 30 weeks. I am yeah. really hoping that mine's right. on the so six that weeks like side. means nothing, right? Yeah, like exactly. That. It's like you have a month and a half to two and a half years. So 30 I'm, weeks is not two and a half years. Oh, 30 weeks, right. I was thinking 30 months, okay. two and a half years. 30 you weeks. hit his head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's, that's I think we're caught up. Yeah. Um, Renee would like to see some gym training videos. There will yeah. definitely be stuff related to our off-season training, gym work, bike work, rip row, skills work. Yeah, all pretty sorts much of stuff. whether Mackie gets surgery or not. Like he's looking at some pretty intensive rehab. It's just like yeah. if he doesn't get surgery, he'll be able to start that a little sooner. Yeah. Um, either way, we'll be working with our PT, Dane. Um, he's at Revo in Boulder. They're the best. They are the best. They're super awesome. So mm -hmm. I, I would say our outlook is pretty positive at this point. Yeah. Like we've been super pleased with the orthopedic shoulder guy that he's seeing, like very level-headed, smart, like yeah. Um, been very helpful. So yeah. that's awesome. Um thank you, Scott, for the super chat. For the super sticker. That's a new thing that you can do on YouTube now. You can do super stickers. I like this one. really hilarious, Number one, it's a good one. parts coming out. I know. I really like it. That's a good one. Trails to Ales is wondering if we are doing a calendar in 2020. I hope so. We didn't take that many pictures this year because we were so busy making videos. Yeah, we were so focused on YouTube. We'll probably look into that. I think we're... and see what we got. I think we're going to try. We're definitely going to try because we would like to... Yeah, we'd like to do a calendar. We've always enjoyed yeah. that. Um, yeah, so for people just tuning in, part of our reason for doing this live stream is Perlazumi will be publishing the sort of film mini documentary that they shot following us at BCBR earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, we're really excited that this is really good timing for this to be coming out because we get to relive it a little bit like, and obviously things have been rough really the past fun. couple of weeks, but yeah. it's a reminder that like this year was actually amazing and really like, it's just yeah, there. yeah, I mean, I would say 2019 was really a breakout year for us in a lot of ways. Oh. But saying. one of the coolest things we did was BCBR and the video that they have put together is amazing. So if you're just tuning in and you missed the pitch earlier, Go over, open up another tab, go over to the Pearl Zumi YouTube channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell, because that's going to be coming out sometime tomorrow, so that way you'll get the notification. 
they do some awesome stories. They follow other athletes that they have. They did some stuff about criteriums um, for, on their road racing side. That was just really well done and like really like telling the story of the place and the race in a way that um, is not just like your typical like brand advertisement. Like that is not what this video is about. So no, no this is definitely like following. Well, it's following us, but it's yeah. also telling the story of BCBR and like it's BCBR is really cool. So like definitely worth a watch. So head over there, hit the subscribe button because they support us and help make it possible for us to do what we are doing. Um, and so we want to show them that support. And yeah. so you guys can help us continue being able to do what we do by going over there and hitting subscribe. Well, these stickers are awesome. These are awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> you are I love that sticker. Is it a awesome. snowman or a pear? <laughs> I, I think it can be whatever we want. Yeah. It's a pear. It has a little leaf. No, it has a leaf on his head. <laughs> uh, and lawn as well. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> the weightlifting. Yes. Yeah. Back to that. Maybe not that soon. But some of um, Rebecca says, I have some pearly movie shorts for 25 years and they're still good to go. Yeah. Their stuff lasts forever. When we started working with them, my dad just like was like digging through his like you know, box of old bike clothes and was like, this is from 1985, but this is from... Like, seriously, <laughs> it was hilarious. We it were like so multiple pieces of pearl clothing from the 80s. And we were like, really, Jim? And he's like, so cool. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's doing it. It's perfect condition. And I just, you know... A lot of like, style, but, you know... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. says snowman can have a leaf hair too. Thank you. Okay, that's <laughs> a good point. A good point. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sort of a, we lost the, they lost, the, lost, the lost the plot. No, that's different, losing the plot is when you go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, other thing that we wanted to mention, which we mentioned earlier, but for people who are recently here, as Daily MTV Rider just said, thank you for the super chat, by the way, congrats on 40K. We recently hit 40,000 subscribers, and that is yeah. huge. That means we have more than doubled our number of subscribers this year. Um, which really makes us feel awesome and we're super stoked. So and we definitely thank you guys. like blue. I think our goal for this year was like 30,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. So pretty much like 25% above that. Yeah. So thank you guys that's so pretty much. Pretty awesome. Yeah. We're Huge. pretty excited and really excited. we're excited. We have a lot of cool plans for 2020 and I think you guys are going to really like it. And we also so we're all stoked possible changes yeah. in the works some changes Ooh. in the works but that's literally all we're saying right now <laughs> <laughs> thank you paul for the super chat Thanks, as paul. well and yeah. the stickers the stickers are really like the stickers are awesome <laughs> oh, i like it i like it both shoulders multiple times oh dude, dude be careful <laughs> that sounds horrible that did sound horrible um Wait, there's another one. Jason said he has his dad has Pearl Azumi bib shorts from '92. That is a long time for bib shorts, yeah, because the chamois flattens out. I feel like so. You're you're kind of a princess about your chamois, though. It's true. It's true. I want my chamois to be comfortable the and chamois. not flat. <laughs> um. Uh, cool. Jason's gonna be watching the Pro Video tomorrow. Yeah. You guys should all watch the Pro Video tomorrow. It's we got we got we got yeah we got you really yeah good. it's really good really awesome yeah it actually like I feel like fits really well with our BCBR playlist mm -hmm. so I think we might actually add it to our playlist because you can add other people's videos to your playlist and just let people watch like maybe theirs first and then all seven R's or all seven R's first and then, I don't know. Anyway, it fits in really nicely with the story that we told over that seven days. So I think it's a really, I think it's a really good one. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And I, I, for the people who weren't here earlier, what yes. I was saying is I think really interesting for us to see someone else's perspective on like what we're doing. Cause we're so kind of like used to telling our own story on YouTube. So mm -hmm. it's cool to like, step back a little bit and let someone else do it for one. <laughs> and, and hope that that matches up with the story that we feel like we're telling, which I feel like it really did. That's yeah, like, that's sure. really cool is to feel like the story that we want to tell is the story that other people are receiving as well. So that's really cool. And so new 
Princess Shami Boone's Matthew's signature edition. Yeah, we'll talk to Pearl about, we'll talk to Pearl about it. probably what they should rename their like high end jam. Yeah, the Mackie nice. Princess Edition. Princess, <laughs> <laughs> the Princess Edition. Princess Mackie like and the Shammy. Princess Mackie and the Shammy. One day we want to write like children's books, oh, mountain yes. biking children's books, so that's obviously going to be one of them. Yeah. It's about someone who has like a small stone in their shammy or something. No, a stone would be significant. <laughs> it has to be way less significant. A grain of sand, grain of sand. in their, yeah. their shammy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the story. Yeah. We've got it. We'll let you guys know when we start our children's series, so you guys can all buy them. <laughs> um, for people who are just tuning in today, we are sort of giving an update on my shoulder, which, as you can see, I am no longer wearing a sling. My shoulder is doing surprisingly well, given that I am just over three weeks from the crash, which. I know some of you watched and some of you didn't watch, which was also okay. <laughs> it was a bad crash, torn AC or AC separation, which is torn ligaments in my shoulder. So you can actually sort of see the bump right there. Oop, not supposed to do that. Um, but in general, I'm feeling surprisingly good. I talked to the doctor and he said I could try range of motion and I have ridiculously good range of motion. So yeah. I'm, yeah, it's really like whichever way you look at it, it's good news that he has news. like pain free range of motion. Yeah, free. like it's given the and we talked about this at the beginning, we weren't here. Like he's somewhere between a grade three and a five, not a four. That's different, don't ask. <laughs> um, grade five is usually surgical because there's muscle stuff involved. Grade three, the outcomes are often similar. Um, so we will find out more tomorrow. That yeah. will be on Patreon as soon as we find out. And thank you, Trails to Ales, for the forty dollars for forty k. That is that was awesome. That's that was good thinking. <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, everyone, cross their fingers for me. Yeah, please. please. Thinking of us tomorrow. Positive, um, non-surgical vibes. Do not do surgery. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have heard, we've heard from a lot of people with this injury, like. And I'd say it's a pretty even mix of people who got the surgery and were happy with it, got the surgery and had issues, didn't get the surgery and healed really fast and were fine, and didn't get the surgery and then had to get a surgery later. Like it's really, and that makes it's it a difficult one. Yeah. I think it really is going to kind of come down to Mackie talking to this orthopedic surgeon and ultimately like making his own decision for what makes sense. And part of what they say is like the collarbone is apparently it provides stability or support for your shoulder blade. And if they're not attached and they move independently, then long term you're going to have issues and you're not going to be like able to move your shoulder properly. And Sid and I are not experts, yeah, but like so when he told to me that, that like too much. I was like, I, I know, but I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist. <laughs> but I was like, what do you think, Sid? And she like tried to touch both. And she's like, I don't know. It sort of seems like they're staying together. So crossing my fingers. No, but I'm I'm trying to be optimistic. Positive, optimistic vibes. That being said, if I need to get surgery, I will get we surgery because yeah. I care about being able to use my arm properly. Yeah. And luckily we, we can afford to do it. Yeah. Um, we have saved money for basically things like this. <laughs> yep. So obviously, yeah. I think that the scary thing with any surgery is like there are pretty high rates of complication with the surgery, and there's no like one surgery that like doesn't have issues. Like there's no accepted. There's like three or four different ways of doing it that have, um, you know, similar rates of people having issues with it, and. Um, someone said, what would they do in the surgery? So the ligament, no, I don't know if they do that anymore. I think that didn't work very well. Um, I think they basically would put a plate with like a hook in it, in his collarbone and then wrap sutures around the, where's the helpful person who knew that word bone name? Acromonium. Acromonium. Acromion. Anyway, so they wrap like the sutures around that through the like hook. They basically thing. tie my collarbone down. It sounds and then let horrific. everything yeah, acromion. 
there they you go. tie it down and let everything scar. Thanks, Cole. Thanks, Cole. <laughs> and let everything scar into place so that it's where it needs to be. Yeah. And so my hope is that it will, it's close enough to where it needs to be without them doing that, that it will scar into place on its own. Yeah. And he's probably going to have a bump there forever, regardless. Like that seems to be. I'll never be able to be a shoulder model. I'm pretty disappointed. That was my plan post bike racing. Sounds <laughs> like a good thing you're going to bike because anatomy, not so much. Yeah, <laughs> true. Actually, Ouch. to be honest, I think when it comes to like muscles, we do pretty well, but all the little bones up in there. Um, all yeah. the bones up in that business. Yeah. Um, um, all things aside, did we have a good time in Bentonville? I had a great time racing here. the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, we are currently in Eureka Springs with friends. And uh, yeah, it's been a blast. We actually really like, obviously the last couple of weeks have been hard, but they've also been really fun. I think like we have really amazing friends here. We've been like watching a lot of movies and playing board games and hanging out. And we went we to just multiple went. Halloween parties, which if you know us is very multiple parties unusual multiple yeah. parties in one week so mm -hmm. um it's been good for us i think in a lot of ways like it would have been great to like have that realization and do what we needed to do without having a major injury but like sometimes that's what it takes yeah yeah i really i wish i could have had that reminder on something a little smaller like a, a four foot drop or a five foot drop yeah um, we did not go to Slaughterama. I decided to do the cyclocross race instead. Um, I'm kind of a curmudgeon about shuttles recently. It's so true, guys. It was like, that sounds really fun. I don't want to ride Yeah, I was like, oh, times. I'll do the, the extreme version, which is where you just pedal it. But then I was like, okay, seven hours on the bike is probably a five lot. to seven hours. Um, would have been a lot with my hand where it's at. Or honestly, just with my training where it's at. I haven't been doing that, so... I went and did a cycle press race. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it looks fun. It looks like a super cool event. Yeah. It just wasn't the right time for us, yeah. obviously. Shout out to Trails to Ales and for Oh yeah. Yeah. We would agents. love yeah. <laughs> yeah <I wish. laughs> we would love to have any of you who are not on Patreon come and join us on Patreon. It's a really good group of people over there. It's really fun because there's a lot of people who like chat with one another. Um, we also have a Discord where people can chat, but it's just cool. It's a good community of people, and it's nice to feel like we have people who really, really have our back and, like, real-time updates there, and it's it's just cool. And we have a Discord channels that aren't limited to Patreon yeah. as well, so yeah. if you have questions, um, that's a really, if you, and you are on Discord, that's a really good way to get your questions answered, maybe by us, maybe by other people who watch our channel and make know. Um, I'd say like the worst way to try to get in contact with us is Instagram messages. Like every now and then I go through our message requests and I feel really guilty. Yeah, I'm like, like, oh, and I'm like, oh, I would like to like reply to this, but Instagram like buried it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just really hard to stand on top of that because yeah. people are like responding to like sending emojis to the stories and all of a sudden there's like, 200 message requests, that, right? So, yeah. um, Discord is a good way to get in touch with us. Also, like, email if you have a serious. There's a contact form on our yeah. website. Anything yeah. like that. People send Anything is better than Instagram messages. Yeah. If you're looking for a response. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to we'll answer a few more injury questions and then we want to talk about um, Why doesn't insurance cover the surgery? Okay, so it probably oh, would it if we went back to New Mexico. However, our deductible is very high. Um, so and after you reach the deductible, we still pay like thirty percent. Right. So that's the problem. Um, so it's like we would spend all this time going back. We'd have to find a specialist there that we liked, that we felt was going to do a good job. We would spend as much. And then it, yeah, it might be slightly cheaper, but it would be a way yeah. more of a hassle. So we're probably, if I need surgery, hopefully I do not, we will probably do it here in Arkansas out of pocket because the specialist that I've been seeing is really good. Yeah, is, American yeah, American healthcare, healthcare is yes, too complicated. Correct. Yes, it yeah. is. Um, so, because basically, like, this is the really stupid part, but the uninsured 
rates are often way cheaper than what they bill the insurance. So while we're out of state, we count as uninsured. So we, we get really less. cheap rates. Like I think when Mackie got x-rays there, like the x-rays were like $50, um, yeah. which if they bill the insurance, they'd be, I don't even more no, than that. What? So um, that's the, the short answer, basically. Yeah. We've, spent a while pricing it out as well as we could it's hard because we don't know exactly exact cost. Exact cost. that's hard to get yeah yeah um that, dan says maybe the arkansas surgeon would be willing to do a brand deal we considered, it. we considered that the problem is the surgeon cost is actually not that much it was like a grand or two i think it was two grand the surgery center basically the hospital where they do the surgery is the majority of that cost so yeah but yeah because the, the surgeon is actually super cool and i think he like they're the shoulder, the shoulder center of arkansas like mm -hmm. they've been Shout awesome them. They've been about amazing. like helping with figuring out how much things cost and they're they're like we have some wiggle room but unfortunately like the the surgery the big surgery costs are from like the anesthesiologist and like the surgical center and the hospitals like liability coverage and blah 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 yeah not fun. Someone says, when are we getting married? We've been married, married for two Woo! years. Yeah. Our anniversary was the day after Mackie fell off the porch. It wasn't our best. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin our anniversary. Um, but I kind of did. Because I sat on a couch like this. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, wait, like this. Yeah. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> Actually, at this point, talk about pain injury just a tiny bit longer. Okay. My forearms are still the most painful yeah. thing. Like that's what I mentioned in the video is like after two days, that was what was most painful. And as everything has improved, my shoulder actually feels fairly good. My forearms still hurt. I can almost reach my arms straight, but I can't shake hands and I can't pick up heavy things because like the pushing down really hurts. Yeah, we honestly really for a while thought he might have like broken both of his arms. At this point, We're I'm pretty sure that's not it. Say the running theory is like muscle tears in both forearms, basically. Yeah. And they've gotten a lot better. Like yeah. the first couple days, which was what we showed in the video that we posted recently, was it was really like bad. he was stuck like this. I couldn't feed myself. <laughs> I couldn't reach yeah. my mouth. I had to like Sid had to feed me. Our friend Kelsey here yeah. fed me a hamburger. Yeah. She was like, She's having a baby soon, so we we're like, yeah, you're it was practicing. Like, it was practice, <laughs> and I won't spit it out on you or throw it at you. Um, yeah, so feeling a lot better, but still not 100%. Yeah, yeah, so as someone says, like, two weeks straight with her. Yeah, I think it really was, like, like way over, like, if you had just, like, done, like, bicep curls to, or maybe, like, push-ups, push like, push-ups to, like, absolute fatigue, you know? Multiple times. Multiple <laughs> times, yeah. <laughs> so that's actually a good question. The type of person who wants redemption on the job, or are you the type of person who wants nothing to do with it ever again? I I would like to hit the drop again so that I don't have a mental hang up about it. I have no desire to do it anytime soon. Because <laughs> yeah, because I can't. Um I will at some point come back and hit the drop. Alex will probably but, fix full in. Yeah, you but that's that. Either. But that's not the issue. The, the landing is not I know, the issue. But it's yeah. Just, no. Anyway, <laughs> I will come back and hit the drop. I don't want to have a mental block about it. I'm not especially scared of the drop, honestly, because I know what went wrong. Like if it if it was just a fluke thing and I didn't know what had happened, I would probably be terrified of that drop and drops in general. Mackie doesn't traumatize easily. No, I might be. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably Same having a bigger regression on drops because of his crash than he is. Which like, I feel really bad about. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Because that's what I always imagine is going to happen to me on every drop I've ever hit. It's never happened. It's never but happened. Then I saw it happen to you, and I'm like, I'm never doing brain drops fart. again. But you, don't, <laughs> you didn't brain fart like I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, Leo, welcome. Made it here just in time. Um, yes, we are both recovering. Well, Sid is... Compression sleeves are a good idea. That's an interesting Actually, idea. We should try that. I think we have some somewhere. Yeah. What I really want is a hot tub. I don't have a hot tub. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have high speed bumps now and then. High speed bumps, I think. Oh, yeah. high bumps. <laughs> I was like, that's going to be kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who are just tuning in, we've talked about my crash a certain amount and that I'm doing fairly well. I have an appointment tomorrow to find out whether or not I need surgery. Hopefully, I do not. Um, but what we kind of want to focus on is the fact that it's been a really amazing year, thanks in a huge part to you guys. Um, we really appreciate you guys subscribing, watching our videos, leaving the comments, being so supportive. It's made this year really, really fun. It's been a really successful year. It and has I think been, totally. It's a, it's a powerful lesson for us to have these setbacks and also just like remind ourselves regularly that like this doesn't define our year. No. Like, we both got hurt. That sucks. It sucks that it kind of happened at the same time. It's weird because we hadn't been hurt for six, seven years. Yeah. We've, um, we've been very fortunate and careful. And then we, we got unlucky. And that's a bummer. But we don't want to focus on that. And one thing that we're really excited about is tomorrow, Pearl Izumi is releasing the video that they had a guy come out and shoot following us at BC Bike Race. So, you know, we we got to see it. It's really good. It's um, really, really good. Yeah, coming out tomorrow. So if you have not done so yet, open up a new tab, go to Pearl Azumi's YouTube and hit subscribe, turn on the notifications so that you find out when it comes out tomorrow because um, it's really fun. And then we'll be reading comments and stuff and responding to questions and things if people have any. And like we said earlier, just repeating, like, I think it's really good timing that this is coming out right now because they have even really focused on like crash and injury and rehab recently. And like, it's a good reminder that like, this year was awesome. Like we achieved awesome. a lot. Like for me, I feel like it was definitely like a breakout year in terms of like fitness and like figuring out a little bit like the kind of racing that I actually enjoy and that I think it brings out like the best in me. Sid likes racing head to head with people. Whereas enduro you're racing on the clock. Sid's like, I'm gonna get you. Yeah. And, and that her. was an interesting revelation. Because mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of things I do like about enduro racing, but the lack of the head to head stuff I think just doesn't bring out my best Great racing. String, yeah. yeah. And then I think for us on YouTube, like we finally kind of figured out like the kind of stories we want to be telling mm -hmm. and more than doubled our subscribers um you guys thank you yep we broke twenty five hundred dollars on patreon which like to me that was really huge because like having the stability of like support on patreon just makes everything better yeah so we've been making a living via sponsorship for pretty much since like 2015 though no. Mm -hmm. Calling it a living is probably a stretch yeah. for living. a couple of years here. But, we're still um, alive, so it was a living, basically. Yeah, but we were doing other things. Yeah. Stuff like that. So yeah. we've been doing this for a while. It's always very stressful, especially this time of year. Like you always have a couple things that kind of like the rug gets pulled out from underneath you. Like you know, because budgets are changing. Like goal companies have different goals, and it's usually not personal, but like stuff changes and. Even <laughs> and I think like having the support on Patreon this year has kind of given us the courage to like ask for what we're worth a little bit and like and not just say oh okay well that's the best we can get we'll just take it and be like you know we want to do we want to do the best that we can do we want to do the kind of events we want to do we want to be able to show the kind of videos that we want to show and we can't do that if we just have to accept an offer financially and so to have the support on Patreon gives us this sort of base level of stability where we can say, okay, some sponsorship, this, this stuff isn't going to work out and some is, but we can keep doing this because we love doing it and we aren't going to starve, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. all of that to say, so thank you for the burrito money. Basically. Thank you for the burrito <laughs> money. Our patrons are amazing. Yeah. And thank you, Renee. That's huge. Also. Really huge. We really, <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah, Renee is also a patron. Hopefully we don't patron. need the surgery money. Yes, <laughs> we yes. We will spend I'm... it wisely on tacos and burritos. 
Yes, promise. Taco. Taco. Also, want to give <laughs> Feldy Bikes oh, yeah. a thank you as well. Sorry, we were oh, jabbering. Yeah. Surgery. yeah, we are hoping for no surgery. We are hoping for no surgery. Um, we've got a lot of stories of injuries here in the comments. A lot of stories of injuries in the comments on both the crash video and videos about me breaking my hand. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that really broke it. Really brought home like how many people are struggling with injury as mountain bikers. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that we could all really talk about and address a little bit better. Um, you know, why is that happening? Why is that happening? And are people getting, you know, the sort of treatment they need to return to being at the top that's of their really game on a mountain bike? I mm -hmm. think, and I think we're very lucky in the sense that doing what we do, we have incredible access to good people to help yeah. us get better yeah. and not everybody has that and mm -hmm. i think i hope a little bit with our videos we can help somewhat just like show i don't know like that it is possible <laughs> yeah. yeah to get back after an injury i mm -hmm. think also like if you see a physical therapist who doesn't understand what you want to be doing, um, go somewhere else if yeah. you can. And that, yeah. I mean, that's the hard thing. Not everybody is able to go somewhere else, mm -hmm. but I've seen a lot of physical therapists for various issues over the years. And that's sort of the reason we ended up with Dane at Revo is he gets it. He's a mountain biker. He's worked with elite athletes from like football players to power lifters to mountain bikers and there's always this like from the very first time you walk in the door the goal is to get you back to sport and treat you as an athlete mm -hmm. it's not like oh wiggle your fingers in circles for three weeks you yeah. know it's like this is <laughs> holistic. Like, oh, now you can type like, and it's like that's great but i need to do more than just type for right. example like yeah i think it's a little more holistic and um I guess I just want people to know that that kind of help is out there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, depending on your insurance situation, like it might be expensive, but um, we only get one body. So exactly. if you're able to invest in your body, if you can save money elsewhere, um, I think that's a good investment. Mm -hmm. and, and also as part of that, well, first of all, huge shout out to Byron for the super chat, another big one. Really, really, really appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, but like talking about the crash thing, it's the other thing that we want to show with our videos is that crashes usually are not just like magical, unpredictable, like you can never tell when it's going to happen. And the reason we we like to emphasize that is we don't want people to be scared of riding their bikes because they feel like a crash can magically happen at any time and you never know why. No, it's usually your like fault. That's, it, <laughs> unfortunately, it is usually your fault, but that's why I went so in depth on that last video of my crash explaining what happened. But I wasn't trying to make excuses. I was trying to explain what happened so that people didn't feel like, oh, I should never hit a drop again because I might die or I might get hurt. I know, but, but you shouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, but, <laughs> but understanding what happened and like breaking it down and being able to, to realize that that's why I'm not traumatized. You know, I'm not traumatized because I know what happened. I know what I did wrong. It wasn't just like, I rolled the dice and I got unlucky yeah. this time. And I, that's something that we really try to emphasize on our channel and want people to understand is that you are in control of what you're doing. And freak accidents do happen. But like, in general, if you spend time working on your strength, working on your skills, working on your fitness, you will ride safer, you will ride faster, you will have more fun, and that's all in your control. And I think the final piece to that, which is what you didn't do, mm -hmm. was listen to your body with recovery and stuff. Like, before yep. he crashed, Mackie did, he did that fat tire crit, he did a 50-mile race, and then we rode for five days in a row. And we then rode we did. Monday, he did Zumba Strong on Tuesday, rode Wednesday, <laughs> rode Thursday, <laughs> rode Friday, fell off a porch on Saturday. Yeah, so he did not have a rest day. No, and I think I it's like, sometimes your brain just 
cuts out. You know, it's just like wasn't thinking basically. Um, yeah, and someone says luck favors the most prepared. It's true, and I think yep. in a lot of ways, like Mackie was lucky because he was prepared with this crash. Like, you know, he was unlucky in the sense that you were maybe you oh, made I, bad decisions. I, I made bad decisions. Yeah. yeah, but you got. But given the bad decision that I made. I was about as prepared for it as I could have yeah. been. We've spent a lot of time in the gym this year. Yeah. I have a lot of upper body strength. I have a lot of shoulder strength and stability that I have not had in years past. And that's probably why I don't seem to have any broken bones. We're fairly sure. <laughs> and why Still some it's, questions about some somewhere, of the yeah. in his wrist, it's somewhere in between a three and a five instead of definitely being a five and for sure needing surgery. Or right? like having... A lot of people who do this injury, they also tear their rotator cuff. They also mm -hmm. broke, break their club. They also makes dislocate the their shoulder. Hard. They also dislocate. Yep. So it's like, yeah, it's a bad injury, but it could be like way, way, way worse. But anyway, um, but we got another five minutes or so. Let's spend it talking well, and about let's something say more fun. Thank you to John yeah, for the you. super chat. 40 for 40K. Yeah, 40 for 40K. <laughs> and you keep being more awesome too, John. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> um. One more time, if people are just tuning in, video with Pearl Azumi coming out tomorrow about our BC bike race experience. It's a different perspective than the one that we told. I think it's very cool. We um, got to see it, a yeah. like sneak preview. I'm super excited. Yeah. yeah. So super open excited. up a new tab, go over to Pearl Azumi's YouTube channel, hit subscribe, um, and yeah, be ready for that tomorrow. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, Thank you to Fred for the super chat. Yeah. Um, also, we had Michael Cunningham said he just got into mountain bike a year ago at 50 and mm -hmm. watching his watching our videos gave him the confidence to do his first mountain bike race, two mountain bike races this year. Congratulations. That is another huge part of what we want to do this year and like and inspire people to do is go out there and ride their bikes and have fun and try racing because it's so much fun. And it's such a good group of people. And like, you just go out there and you're like, all of a sudden, it's just, you're surrounded by supportive people who are there to have a good time and push themselves and improve. And there's not this like, like being it's mean. Very it's, cutthroat no, it's not like cutthroat. It. People are like really supportive and cool. And so many people I know have met like fellow riding friends at races. Like they didn't know that there was a person who lived five blocks away who was also in yeah. mountain biking. And then all of a sudden they had a riding partner when they never did before because they met them at a race. So if you have not tried racing and there's, and you're thinking about it, we totally recommend it. It's really, really fun. Yeah. As Michael Cunningham said, yeah. you don't have to do serious big races. Like no, don't we'll do have this. a video about this in the next few weeks, but I did my first ever cyclocross race two weekends ago and it was perfect. It was like, tiny little race there were maybe like 40 people total across like 10 different categories maybe 20 people total? <laughs> there were like three other people in my race they were all in different categories too yeah. like it was i was pretty much doing it by myself but that was like perfect for a first there was no cyclocross race there because no... like not gonna lie cyclocross makes me a little nervous because you're on a road bike riding around stuff and like through mud puddles you have to get on and off and you're like are my things gonna undo or am i gonna smash it to this wooden <laughs> barrier and look like an idiot um and it's, it's like a totally different skill set which is so fun but also like i was really glad to race like i raced as a cat four that's what my license was um so like no pressure so i guess what i'm saying is like even we do this like we've been racing mountain bikes professionally it's still okay to like go to a little race, really especially fun, when you want to try actually. something new, you know, yeah. like go to a tiny race and just like. Find your local race, go out there, have fun, talk to new people, meet some new riding buddies, see if you like racing. Like we know plenty of people who've tried racing and they're like, yeah, it's not really my thing. And then we know plenty of other people who've tried racing and are like, wow, how have I not done this before? This is the best thing ever. So it's definitely worth a try. Um, we're getting close to Thank our, you, Tim. yeah, awesome. thanks, Tim. yeah. Thank you for the, the moving forward. Um, yeah. That's a good way to put it. It is a good, it is a good way to put it. And I think like 
like all the comments we got on our video were really awesome and supportive, but it was a second harder for me probably than you. But it was, it was hard to read like a hundred iterations of you almost broke your neck. Yeah. <laughs> that was like a little stressful. And I, I were very grateful that nothing worse happened. We had kind of processed that by the time we did the video and um, obviously like totally understand that people seeing it were like, Oh, you're so lucky. Like you didn't do these 10 horrible things that I'm going to yeah. list out. Um, yes. We are so yeah, so I just, um, Tim appreciate the sentiment. Like we are mm -hmm. definitely forward focused yeah. at this point. And like I said, it hasn't been, I mean, it's not been the best couple weeks, but no, it's been a rough eight weeks, August, September, October, 12 weeks. <laughs> so they added to the next, I mean, that, I mean, yeah, I think why it was hard for me to read is that was what was going through my head. Yeah. Like, so I completely Let's understand why too. people were writing that. It's yeah. like, yeah, but um, it didn't happen in the same place. So. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> yes, as Tim said, looking forward, moving ahead. As I alluded to earlier, we have some potential big changes happening for next year that as things solidify, we will be announcing on Patreon. So we're really excited. We're excited about this video tomorrow so we can kind of like relive the excitement and awesomeness that was BC Bike Race 2019. Yeah. Um, and we just have some fun plans for next year. We're like, we've got all these races in our tentative calendar and we're like, okay, like which ones make sense? Which ones do we want to focus on? Like how does the schedule work out? So there's Perfect. lots of really fun, exciting stuff happening in the very near future. And we really appreciate all of you guys being part of it. That's been it's really huge. You. Comment from Matt. He just won the speed champ and I in the 11 to 12 category. Congratulations, Matt. You inspired me to push myself to the limits. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. cool. And that's those are the kind of stories that we love hearing. So if you, you know, if you've done a race recently and we helped inspire that at all, we would love to hear about yeah. that. Leave us a comment, send us a message on our contact form or website. That always makes us feel really positive and like we are, we're succeeding in our goal of getting people excited about riding mountain bikes and mountain bike racing. Um, yeah, I think um, we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, I think we're going to leave that there. Thank mm -hmm. you guys for joining us. That was awesome make sure you're subscribed to hello Zoomy and to us if you somehow stumbled in here and you have no idea yeah, who we are like we're nice people go ahead and subscribe. and forty thousand other people <laughs> agree that you should subscribe oh, so come on your mountain biker just got here i'm sorry oh sorry <laughs> mediocre mountain planning. biker but we will leave the replay up first. yeah so yeah we'll leave the replay yeah, up for sure yeah um but yes thank you andrew that's awesome Travis just got here too. I'm sorry, guys. We're, now I'm feeling guilty. But we we only have a couple more days here with our friends Alex and Kelsey, who have kindly been letting us stay at yeah, their house for, uh, for like ten days. Stay has turned into six weeks. Yeah, so, so we want to go friends. spend some time with them and hang out with them before we head out in a couple of days to go up to Ohio to hang out with Sid's family. So we're gonna do that. Thank you guys so much, everybody who sent super chats. Everybody who is just part of this amazing mountain bike YouTube community and yeah, yeah. we love you guys. Right. We really appreciate you guys. Much love. Yep. To all and, and be more awesome. That was good. And of course, <laughs> be more awesome. <laughs> That's enough. <an> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Good night.